When I get to the colonel's office, the police are just leaving. They tell me they've combed the place and come up empty. I'm not surprised. As I step inside, I try to remember what the colonel sold me. Something about a winter chip and an emergency disc hidden somewhere in the display case. Maybe the info on the disc will tell me something about this chameleon. The mail slot looks well worn. I gotta ask myself once more, does everybody in this town own a credenza? Oh, nice bow. Boy, the chameleon sure was in a destructive mood. Sailing is one of the Colonel's two obsessions. The other one can't be mentioned in polite society. Oh, the Colonel keeps this picture hung up so people will assume that he was in the Air Force. Actually, he was in the Coast Guard's elite volleyball unit. Must be some info in here. Well, apparently the chameleon has no appreciation for cheap ceramic art. Did they leave the colonel for dead, but they spilled garbage everywhere. I'm sure the chameleon went through this stuff and picked up anything important. Chairs are a little too nice for my taste.
nice rice steamer, a barometer, a few books. Nothing interesting. A few cheap vases, some paperbacks, a couple of ornaments. Can't believe the Colonel actually collects this worthless junk. Hmm, nice rice steamer, a barometer. Few cheap vases. Few cheap vases. Ooh, nice brown pot. Looks like a monkey bowl. This must be a ceramic yam. My ex-wife would probably correct me, but I'd say this pot is pink. This spittoon is the only reminder of the days when the colonel used to keep a pinch between his cheek and gum. I wonder if this is a Grecian urn. Well, it looks like the chameleon didn't have time to smash all the vases. Well, it looks like the chameleon didn't have... This must be the disc the colonel mentioned. Maybe I can run it on his computer. hydro dispenser and I thought my water cooler was nice the view outside these windows is breathtaking small table is a perfect resting place for a glass of scotch too bad the colonel got rid of his liquor cabinet Picture frames lying face down. Ooh, nice looking dame. This must be the Colonel Squeeze. If I could track her down, maybe she could give me some more information. Colonel certainly does like his calendar. Spicy. Standard office supply stacking trays. Nice computer. Looks like it's all hooked up. Colonel's got good taste in lamps. Colonel always did have the nicest desk in the business. Chairs are a little too nice for my taste. These desk drawers were probably searched by the chameleon, but maybe he missed something. My P.I. instincts and keen sense of smell tell me that this envelope was sent by a woman of some kind. Looks like these drawers have been picked clean. These desk drawers were probably... Looks like these drawers... Uh, some sort of greeting card. Every time I forget, the fucking mic needs to turn on. So you've been hearing me not say anything. So you've now gone from having half the stream thing gone to me not speaking because I can't turn the fucking mic on. So sorry about that.
Right, sorry, I haven't gone by lately. Work has been hell. Trying to wrap things up before we head out to the tropics. I'll make it up to you when we get there. Spanks and kisses, the Colonel. Yeah, there's nothing in that. Right, now let's look at the computer. Nothing's coming up. I'll need to load up a disk before I get any information off this computer. That's not a problem. Inventory. Emergency disk. Use this. Perfect word document viewer. Okay, there's going to be a lot of text, so give me a sec. Right. Text. In case anything happens to me, I've made up this disk to give you enough information to carry on in my place. Despite our past problems, I don't know anyone else who could replace me. Since you're reading this, I suppose something has gone wrong, so now it's up to you. First of all, you've probably never heard of Capricorn. All you need to know is that it's a secret organisation that infiltrates groups which pose a, uh, a threat to society, and unravels them from inside out. Dozens of cults, terrorist groups and political cabals have been broken up before the public never knew ever, ever, there ever was a threat. There. How I came to be involved with Capricorn is unimportant. Suffice to say that we've done each of us some favours. I've been helping them infiltrate a, co a corporation called Genetic Research Systems, GRS. I won't waste time on details, but I was hired by someone to investigate a disappearance, and the investigation led me to GRS. I learned that there was a secret, um, I learned that there were secret experiments being done there, and the top people were members of cult. I relayed this information to Capricorn and learned that one of their agents was already there undercover. You know about the crusade for genetic purity, and maybe about their religious retreat, the Moonchild. To all appearances, it's a gigantic orbiting biosphere, capable of holding hundreds of thousands of occupants. If, however, the Moonchild is armed with nuclear weapons, it could literally hold the world hostage from its vantage point. Capricorn wants the moon trial destroyed. And this is where Under a Killing Moon sort of clicked into place as if to say, ah, that's what it means. Because I thought Under a Killing Moon would be, I don't know, somebody's gone mad every time I was under the moon, or it's one of those classic kind of nonsensical noir, detective noir titles, but that's not the case. Anyway, the cult at GRS is linked to the crusade. The undercover agent learned that she would be going to the moon child so Capricorn devised a computer virus and encoded it on what's known as a winter chip. I made the delivery of the winter chip from Capricorn to the agent at GRS. Less than three days after I delivered the chip two dozen undercorn Capricorn agents have been discovered and murdered and Capricorn headquarters have been destroyed when died suddenly the faceless forces behind the crusade for genetic purity are responsible for effectively ending Capricorn's existence. GRS is no longer in operation uh, and the undercover agent Eva Shazny has disappeared. What I was doing, what you must now do, is find out what has happened to Eva and help her complete a mission. If she's been discovered, you must find the winter chip and somehow get it to the moon child's computer system. Uh, there is additional information in my safe which may put you on the trail. So we need to find a safe number. Must find out what's happened to Eva and complete her mission. So let me have a quick look at...
Right, so there's a possibility the person's still alive. It's just Capricorn's gone. Bye bye. Alright, okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to pay a visit to let's go to Melon's Toad's apartment and we'll have a look to talk to the Countess later. Okay, pros of uh, Sparvely. Anonymous introduction or follow on. Now I'm just gonna go full on. The name's Murphy. I'm a private I'm a private investigator. Is this some kind of a bust? Express express interest? Business before pleasure or play it straight? No, I'll play it straight. No, I'm not a cop. I'm here because of a mutual friend of ours. Look, if you're looking for a date, I don't do that anymore. I have a boyfriend, and I'm expecting him any minute. State intentions. In many fashion, deliver the tragic news or explain the link to mutual friend. Let's deliver the tragic news. Listen, I hate to be the one to tell you, but I have some bad news for you. Someone tried to murder the colonel. I don't know if he's going to make it. He may be dead now, for all I know. The colonel? Dead? I can't believe it! I guess we won't be going to Bermuda next week. Ditch any many scruples, kind, gentle, looking for information, chastise cautiously. Let's go for B. I know this must be quite a shock, but I'm trying to find out who wanted him dead, and I could really use your help. Hold on a second. How do I know that you didn't, like, kill the colonel? Well, he's not dead yet. Offer proof of good intentions, baffled with logic, or offended. Let's offer proof of good intentions. I have something for you from the Colonel. Okay, let's see it. Give it the greeting card. Yeah, that one. There wasn't any money in it? <laughs> okay, I guess I can answer a few questions. Right, let's ask about, so she's not going to know about any of these people, apart from the Colonel, obviously. So I'll ask her about that. Well, he was nice to me, so I was nice to him. I mean, it was fun. I feel kind of bad now, though, because um, he gave me this package that I wasn't supposed to open unless something happened to him, but I opened it anyway. And I was so disappointed because there was nothing in it except for this stupid key. No money, no jewels, no nothing. Right, that key will open up the uh, file, this say, the, the filing cabinet, which is good. The colonel talked about that, but I never really paid any attention. So she doesn't really know much about the crusade. Let's see if she knows about the lieutenant. I'd like to help you, but I can't. Right, okay, so let's see if she knows about Rusty Clown. Are you trying to make me feel dumb? Okay, so she doesn't know about that. What would she know about Ham Underwood? I don't know about that. No, okay. The Countess? I'd like to help you, but I can't. Okay. She know any Underworld figures? Are you trying to make me feel dumb? I don't know about that. Nope. Okay, there's no point in her asking about Knickerbocker. Uh, Knickerbocker. So let's talk to about, um, where was Lowell Percival? Um, let's ask her about Lowell Percival. I can't remember who he was. I'd like to help you, but I can't. Okay, so she doesn't know that. The chameleon? Chameleon? Oh, I feel so stupid. The colonel mentioned that name a couple of times, but I thought he was saying he was getting close to getting his hands on, like, a million. Oh, these valley girls. Right, ask her about herself. Well, I'm just a lonely girl looking for a new friend to play with. <laughs> you might be fun, but you don't look like you have very much money. 
I'm gonna ask about the key. Sure, I guess you can take it. I, I don't even know where I'd use it. That's fine. Let's end the conversation. And uh, we go back to the Colonel's office. And now we can use the key on the filing cabinet. And I really don't like the um, humming because it makes me sound like something's going to come around the corner in a minute and gank me. But uh, let's use it here. Right, open this. Examine it. These documents are all in the code. Hopefully the colonel's got some sort of decoding manual around here. Right, unfortunately we cannot open up the bottom part because it's all part of the same thing. So if I open this part, the top part will open. Oh, that's something we've missed. But I can't remember whether it's coming now or not. Unofficial detective? I've never figured out the colonel's tendency toward Todd or Smut. A small return receipt from UPEX. Apparently the colonel sent something recently. Do some this. So something was sold to Melon to Toad. Um so I'll have to find out what that is. Which is fine. Because we can just go straight back. Back again? You know, I've been thinking, um, I think I could like be friends. You know, I think you should stick around and talk to me for a while, because um I don't want to be lonely. Okay, match refusal, leave all options open, or extreme cynicism. Let's leave all options open. Okay, ask about the UPEX receipt. Oh yeah, I got another dumb letter from the colonel. There were some like numbers and stuff written on a piece of paper inside. You can have it. I can't even understand what it is. Well, we got five, seven, one, and that's the combination for the safe. We don't need to ask for anything else. We can end the conversation. We can go back to the colonel's office. And all we're gonna do is look at this. Be the safe the colonel referred to on the emergency disk. This is a top of the line security safe, and I'll need a combination to open this. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm left clicking this. One, two, three, five, six, seven, one. Right, what we got? This code book looks like it'd come in handy if I could find some coded documents. Okay, let's get this. Must be the safe. I didn't want to do that. This must be the safe the colonel referred to on the emergency disk. This is a top. Yeah, right, it's alright, it's fine. So, uh, let's combine facts. Let's examine this first. Okay, and then we combine shit this with this. Examine that. Right. So uh four for the eleventh. Uh my client is Paul Dubois. A genetic scientist working on a top secret project for GRS. 
I have uncovered information that proves that the project at TRS is being funded by the Crusade for Genetic Purity. Uh, uh, 8th and 11th. Paul believes that a secret cult is at work in GRS, conducting bizarre experiments that could give them new and unstoppable destructive force. He was unable or unwilling to give me a specific details. Why would a genetic research centre be developing a weapon? 19th and 11th. Paul gave me a list of employees that have left the corporation recently. I went through the list and what I was able to locate only one person, Aliana Moore, who I found via credit card trace. She's currently checked into the roadside motel. She says her life is in danger, but she can't tell me why. Something's happening at GRS that's important enough to kill for. What is it? 23rd 11th. With the information from Paul and Aliana, I contacted Capricorn and found out they already have an agent, Eva Shazny, working undercover at GRS, 29th for the 11th. I made a delivery from Capricorn to the Eva Shazny. God help us if her cover gets blown. 6 of the 12, Paul contacted me and said he had enough information in the cult to blow it open. He said he had details on the project and the, the cult and its objectives and also how the moon child figures in. We agreed on a meeting place where Paul would give me details. He never showed up. 7th of the 12th. Paul, uh, both Paul and Eva Shazny have vanished without a trace. I've tried to follow their trail, but I've been constantly blocked by a dangerous character known as a chameleon. My official contact at Interval at all will be that he's a master of disguise. My unofficial contact tell me he's a Native American, a shaman. It's rumoured that he possesses the ancient power of shapeshifting. The ability to appear in different forms. If this is true, he could be anyone. I'm not sure who I could trust now, and if the comedian's working for the call, it must be headed by someone very powerful. 8th of the 12th. GRS has been disbanded. Is the project finished? Am I too late? 10th of the 12th. There are eyes in the shadows, following my every move. A voice in my head is telling me to hurry before someone stops me. But now I've lost my contacts at Capricorn and I haven't found any answers. I need to find a way to GRS. I lost contacts again. Okay. Right, so the next thing we need to do is we're going to the... Countess's mansion. Okay, there's something wrong with this picture. When I was here before, the place looked like a palace. Now it looks like the aftermath of an IRS auction. Somebody wanted me to believe the person I talked to was a real countess. Now I can see I've been played for a sucker. But who set me up and why? So we got a bird up there. There's a bald eagle perched on the chandelier. Oh, man. Now that the animal rights lobby is huge, bald eagles are everywhere. They're worse than pigeons. The front door was open when I got here. The eagle must have flown in. Looks like it's got a bright cigarette case in its claws. I've heard that eagles are attracted to shiny objects. Already got something for that. So what we're going to do though is we're going to have a look around. So careless with plant life. Before I move it, I want to just check around the corner. Okay, I can't see anything. Yeah, there's nothing there. Whoever that was that met me here the other night may have set me up, but I'll bet she didn't get her cleaning deposit back. Trash cans go. This is a nice one. Whoever
whatever that was. It meant this table must have come with a room. Whoever that was, it whoever that was, it. Okay, so there's not really much else around here, apart from the bird. There is this over here, but it's not going to do anything. Searching through that fireplace could be a real pain in the ash. Right, so let's get this bird down. Right, so we can now try and find the thing that it dropped. Looks like an expensive cigarette case. Turns out there's only one cigarette left in the case. Maybe I'll keep it around for a smoking emergency. Okay, and that's all I think we'll find in here. Uh, before I go, I'm going to save. Uh, I'm going to call it 23. And. Um, Redoing some parts due to internet loss uh, before hotel. So that's where we're going next is to the hotel to find um, the roadside motel. Since you don't work at GRS anymore, why do you think your life's in danger? The last day I came to work, I got a note that said my life was in immediate danger. 
when I saw that someone had broken into my apartment, I knew that I wouldn't be safe anywhere. Sounds like my next move ought to be the GRS. Can you help me get in? Yes. I still have a pass key to the main doors. You can take it. Please be careful. GRS has a 24-hour security watch. With the colonel in the hospital, I have no one to turn to. I don't know if I should, but I'm going to trust you. I tell Elena to sit tight and wait for me until I get back. I also warn her to keep the door locked and not open it for anyone except me. Elena obviously doesn't know anything more than what she's told me. She's given me the break I need, though, a pass key to GRS. Like the colonel, I have a feeling that GRS will provide a few answers. And her name's Elena. I, I did say that in the correctly last time, but obviously I messed it up. Right, I'm just going to go back to Chandler Avenue at the moment. Because um, I want to save. Okay, so we save twenty four before GRS building. Right. Let's have a quick look at the inventory. Okay, I don't have the GRS card, but she's given it to me. Okay, um, want to check something okay I just thought that the name might have been on the potential buyers but I don't think it is so GRS building Oh, feeling we're dialing here. Yeah. Child, hmm. It's basically a floating platform. Boy, whoever sat here was really good at tic tac toe. Nice chair. In the corporate environment, lumbar support is a real plug. Consoles seem to be working, but they're unaccessible. Judging by the stains in this mug, its owner was a standard bearer for the coffee generation. Okay, 
nice. Now we're not getting much around here. Right, hang on a minute. There's a desk. Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. Oh, fuck off. Fucking, this is going to be one of those, isn't it? <sighs> Alright, left in here. Nothing else left in here. Nothing else left in here. else left in here. Looks like this computer requires a computer card to get access to it. Computer pass card required to access this computer. Nothing of interest here except an unappetizing wad of gum. Whoa, what's that? A hex wrench. I've got an idea this would come in handy. What a cute little TV. I wish I'd found this little sucker a couple hours ago. Now I've missed all the good soaps. Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so basically go in, come out the room. Okay. Travel. TRS. Nope. So the wrench and the TV thing.
like the TV has no reception capability. It's set up to run only when hooked to a laser disc player. Okay. Um, save. 25. R and D, GRS. Oh, 70, never mind, it, it kind of works anyway. Eva Shazny. The supervisor's office seems like a super place to look for information. Unless some prankster swapped nameplates, this was Ava Shanzi's desk. Shanzi, so it's like Shazny. Looks like I'm not getting in there. These computer panels probably do something, but I have no idea what it is. This type of safe requires a six digit code to open. The people who worked here are anything like me. They would have written the code somewhere in case they forgot it. What was that? Trying to look at what it says. Oh, hi, Sam. I'm just seeing you. Just lurking, no problem. Warning. Oh, shit. Sweep will begin in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Whoa, 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 This way. Yeah, no, no, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. That's the conference room. Marcus Tucker. This looks like the door to the office of the head honcho. We've got enough time to have a quick look in here, but nothing too much before security sweep. This memo 
consists of a short outline titled Anticipated Patterns of Organic Regrowth. Topics listed below include effects on marine life, risk of vegetation contamination, and possibility of inherent immunity. Hmm. Some kind of remote control pad probably controls the audio video display. Well, the video screen worked. Now I need to get something to actually come up on the screen. This memo consists of a short outline. But it looks like it works. Ah, another Playbub magazine. Say what you will, but I love the article. Looks like a make to the conference table. My home movies would look great on that screen. There must be a remote control panel that controls this video screen. Maybe it's somewhere on the conference table. Things used to look to me like it's hooked up to a TV. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. Come on. Okay, so maybe there's a security disk somewhere. Maybe I'm missing something. Aha. Okay. I should turn on the computer first. Computer passcode required to access this computer. Thank you. Alright, so whoever ever reads this, the information contained in this file has been delivered to me by Colonel Dobbs. I've been collecting this information over the past six weeks. I'm now being watched and I doubt I'll I'm now being watched and doubt I'll be able to get in touch with the Colonel. However you are able to get in touch with uh, however you are, please get this information to the Colonel. He has promised to take it to the authorities. Menu. Crucif for genetic purity. GRS product. Moon child initiation to the court. Secret doctrine. Known history of the Brotherhood of Purity. So let's go for the first one. Okay. Crucif for genetic purity. Soon after I was hired at GRS, I was asked to submit a genetic scan. 
When I was found to have no genetic defects, I was invited to join the Crusade for Genetic Purity. I resisted initially, but accepted when I found out that Eva Sh uh, Shanzi wanted to become a member. Eva is a project supervisor here at GRS. I admit I had a romantic interest in Eva and thought it would be a way to get to know her. A small group of people met in Marcus's, Marcus Tucker's office after work and Eva and I were there, uh, were initiated. Um, it didn't take long to realise that this group was not the crusade for genetic purity. The members called themselves the Brotherhood of Purity and there were dark rituals and readings of prophecy. Frankly, I was scared, but I was sure that there would be no way out once I was involved. It was Eva who told me to contact the Colonel about exposing the Brotherhood. It's a GRS project. The project we've been working on is being directed by Marcus Tucker with Eva Shanzi, Nathaniel uh, Th Murthy and Camden, Camden Leander as project supervisors. Tucker's divided the project phases so only he knows everything that's been going on. My part in the project has been to develop a specific artificial viral strain which I've been told will be used in treating respiratory ailments such as bronchitis and asthma. At one time, there were at least 30 people working on our project. Now we're down to eight. I've tried to contact some of the employees that left, but I couldn't. Today I found out what happened to them. Some of them were considered to be genetically suitable and have been sent to the moon child. The rest are dead. Ooh. I accidentally found a recording made of an experiment. Um, and the test subject was one of my former co-workers. I only saw a few moments of the experiment, but it was horrible. I'm sure that the experiment involved the use of an airborne virus that was inhaled. It caused a violent death almost instantly. It's horrifying to think that my research probably contributed to the virus that has been tested. The Moonchild. Those who've heard about the Moonchild have been told that it's religious. It's a religious getaway for faithful members of the Crusade for Genetic Purity. I found out otherwise. It was constructed by the leader of the Brotherhood of Purity and is referred to as the Ark of Humanity. The only people allowed to go there are members of the Brotherhood, genetically pure humans. The moon child is gigantic and has been constructed to easily support thousands of people, along with all known forms of animal and plant life for several generations. The ultimate purpose behind the moon child is to provide a safe haven for the faithful, while the earth is going through its final purification. Uh, yeah, purification. I don't know exactly what the purification entails, but I believe it's directly related to the experiments we've been doing here at GRS. So what's this? That'll be, oh, so it goes around the moon, okay. Initiation to the cult. When I was initiated, Marcus Tucker informed the others that the meeting of my genetic purity then went on to give a short speech. This is what he said to the best of my recollection. The principles of the Brotherhood of Purity has existed for thousands of years, but the order itself was founded by the Docetists in, the three, in 300 AD. We know little about those who founded our order, only the truths that were left behind and passed down from one generation of the Brotherhood to the next. These truths are contained in an ancient text known as the Secret Doctrine. Through the ages, our power has lain in on animosity. 
we have quietly prepared for the day in which the Dokitists prophecies will be fulfilled and the genetically pure will inherit the earth. Many of the history's greatest figures belong to the Brotherhood, but this fact does not appear in any history book. Each of these men, however, laid groundwork for the next generation. Each man's action is simple, a single stone added to a massive structure. It has now been a thousand generations since the foundation of the Brotherhood of Purity, and the time has come for the prophecies to be realised. All has been prepared with the exception of finding the ancient Haber, 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 a powerful talisman forged of magical elements being the vessel through which the Brotherhood's power is channeled. When we have reclaimed the Haber, we will journey to the Moonchild and the, the Guardian of the Faithful and there we will celebrate the purification, a time when earth will be cleansed of all genetic abominations. Then after the waiting, we will return to a pure world and enter the glorious new age. Oh, I think I know what that term. Um... That object was we tried to we stole from Eddie cover on second name but it's Eddie right okay so right okay so they're probably over there waiting to cleanse everybody right okay uh, that was the initiation. Secret Doctrine. The Brotherhood follows the prophecies contained in an ancient text known as the Secret doc doc Doctrine. What I've read, I've been, uh, been told and overheard, I've come up with a description of the Brotherhood's objectives. The secret doctrine tells of an entity called the Incubus, which the Brotherhood could summon when, initi uh, when all the prophecies had come to pass. When I was initiated, I learned that the only one prophecy had not yet befell, uh, been, uh, when I, sorry, when I was initiated, I learned that the only one prophecy had not been yet been fulfilled. Having possession of something called Haber, from what I could gather, the Haber is some kind of mystical statuette which holds sacred powers. Once the Brotherhood found a Haber, the Incubus would then create a moon child. This moon child would be the destroyer of the genetically impure and the garden of the pure and faithful. Another of the prophecies says that a great storm called the Great Alluvion will come from the skies and destroy the impure. This process is referred to as a purification. I think the Brotherhood plans to accomplish this by introducing an airborne virus into the Earth's atmosphere. After the purification, in which all life on Earth is exterminated, comes the period of time known as the waiting. The prophecies say that this will last for two generations. It was for the waiting that the moon child was constructed. After the waiting, the pure races aboard the moon child will return to the earth and begin new order. Okay, last one. Known history of the Brotherhood of Purity. Okay, so origins. The origins of the Brotherhood of Purity predate written history, so many of the details are lost. Your order started in the Far East among a small group of men uh, whose concepts reach thousands of years into the future. While other more primitive men were learning the uses of metal and stone, this brotherhood was embracing rudimentary principles of eugenics and ethnic cleansing. Names and acts of the founders were passed down orally for hundreds of generations. Genially, uh, Genie Ali, uh, Gene, Gene Ali, Gene Ali, Ali, whatever, 
philosophy and icons of the Brotherhood, however, are not fully committed to the paper until the 3rd century AD. A group of men known as outsiders as the Docetists composed the inexpensive tome attempting to summarise the history and doctrine of the ancient order. This text became known as the Secret Doctrine and was accepted as the official word of the Brotherhood. The Roman Empire The Brotherhood of Purity grew steadily in power during the rise of the Roman Empire. Despite the enormous wealth and influence of the Brotherhood, its anonymity was preserved. The number of those who were initiated and received the teachings, signs and passwords were kept to a bare minimum, ensuring complete dedication and fealty, as well as avoiding the dilution of quality which inevitably comes with overpopulation. Hmm. When the Roman Empire fell, the Brotherhood survived and escaped. In fact, it is speculated that the order hastened the downfall for its own benefit. The empire grew in a beast uh, and sedentary and was no longer conductive, no, conducive sorry, to the higher ideals of the Brotherhood of Purity. The members of the order cast their eyes toward the fierce and hungry tribes of the Anglos, uh, Anglos and Saxons, which were not as intellectually advanced as the Romans but had not suffered the physical decline. Middle Ages, many of the kings in medieval Europe were members of the Secret Brotherhood. One was King Henry I, also known as King Henry the Fowler. He ruled Britain around 900 AD and was considered a visionary by the other members of the order. He prophesied that a gigantic storm will appear from the eastern sky and will overwhelm the impure, and this was added to the Secret Doctrine. Other pivotal, uh, other, pivotal, uh, other pivotal and powerful rulers of the Middle Ages were secretly affiliated with the Brotherhood of Purity, including Charles the Great, Henry the Lion, Otto the Great, Philip of Swabia, Conrad IV and Frederick Barbosa. Excuse me. While suitable for the Brotherhood, his closest advisor and confidant, Hugo von Turon, was a high-ranking member. His influence on Charlemagne drastically affected the course of Europe's and the world's history. Counted among the members of the Brotherhood were not only kings and statesmen, but also religious figures, such as uh, Basilus Valentius, Bishop Killingsall, the Count of a Acre, is it? And Ecbert of Muren, the 13th century Bishop of Bramberg. Uh, the Spanish Inquisition was instigated by a single radical member of the Brotherhood who held a higher position in the Papal Order. It was commonly believed that the hundreds of thousands were put to death because they refused to join the Catholic faith. In actuality, these deaths were the result of an enormous and ethnic cleansing. This was done, however, of the Brothers' own violation and was not an act of the Brotherhood. Excuse me a minute. That's better. Uh, splinter groups throughout the Middle Ages and into the 20th century were several branches which sprang from the Brotherhood. The Crusades were in part associated with one of these branches. Eventually the main body was able to get sorry, eventually the main body was able to power off the splinter groups, but not without great bloodshed and civil war. Most of these conflicts have been misinterpreted by history, indicating the extreme and far reaching power of the Brotherhood of Purity. Uh, Adolf Hitler somehow obtained a manuscript of the secret doctrine and was heavily influenced by the principles of the Brotherhood, though he was never a part of the order. It took many years for the Brotherhood to undo the damage done by this madman. 
even in the years which have followed, the main core of the Brotherhood has had to deal with other mutated branches, some of which have grown to massive proportions before the influence of the Brotherhood could bring them under control. Hmm. I just want to check for numbers. Come on, out, out, out. Ooh. Right, okay. Don't know where we're gonna go next. Okay, it's fine. Really joking around at the moment. So I've got that open. What else have I got? Newspaper, credit card, bandana. Wonder whether that will be able to get in. Okay, that was a good, uh, good guess. Warning. Security sweep will begin. Fucking hell. Five seconds. Get out, get out, get out. Go back in. Yes, I can. Okay. Looks like a mini 
Something tells me I ought to see whatever's on it. Can't do that. Just standard office desk. The memo. It says a memo to Marcus Tucker. This disc was confiscated from Ava Shanti before she was imprisoned on the Moonchild. We are still searching her personal effects for any sign of a winter sheet. That button probably triggers the door. The consoles seem to be working, but they're unaccessible. Ah. This security card. Hmm. This laser disc is titled "So You're Starting a New Job at GRS," narrated by Marcus Tucker. Okay. Combine this with this. Okay. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Oh, oh, I know what that'll be. Okay, let me just save. Twenty six. Found more stuff. That's GRS. So we need to go That's fine. I, I'm glad I saved though, because then. So I can't be too close to it. Okay. Try to move a little faster this time. Right, okay, so I know where it, where it is. Okay. Okay, whatever, come on. Right, let's just see which direction it goes. It did try and come back.
Okay, so do this. Zoom. Just trying to get past the bloody robot. Oops, it's coming this way, which is fine because I want to go this way anyway. his place. Wow, they had computer console. Hopefully this won't take too long. Whoa, nice day. I'm willing to bet that access to this computer is extremely unlikely. An old fashioned red tip wouldn't match. My dipple's out of fluid. Maybe I should keep this around for an emergency light. This drawer got pretty thoroughly cleaned out. An old piece of math tape tape is stuck here. Looks like some numbers are printed on it. One, four, two, two, three, five. Yes, it does. One, four. An old piece of math tape is stuck here. Looks like some numbers are printed on it. One, four, two, two, three, five. Yeah, probably doesn't mean a thing. One, four, two, two, three, five. Yeah, it does to me. Because one of the consoles asked for a six digit password. Something tells me I'll find some answers behind this door. This panel must control access to the safe. Looks like it's a voice activated ID system. My guess is that only Marcus Tucker's voice will work on this system. Oh, what? Security sweep will begin in five. Seconds. Right, so one of the places had a six digit code. I need to double check where it was. Tested. Mother approved. Well, the 
down the doors are locked. Is there something worth finding inside? One of the places was a six digit code and I can't remember where it was. Is it in the R and D or is it in the other place? I think we've been in that, we have, haven't we? Might be near the place. Consoles seem to be working, but they're unaccessible. Oh, wait a minute, it was this one, wasn't it? Classic practical joke, but this is ridiculous. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Why am I going to use a mini disc? So I'm just going to save All right, two seven cancel found 
sake. Alright. File. So now I need to go back round to I now need to go back to Marcus Tucker's because what I'm thinking is almost thank you. Let's see what's coming. I go back to his to put the voice thing in. It's coming this way. Just make sure it's not movable. Okay, so this. To access the city, please prepare for voice ID verification. Please speak your name now. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Hello. I'm Marcus Tucker. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Stand by for DNA scan. DNA incompatible. Attention, security, intruder on premises. Whoops. Oh, I can go in. Two initials on it. Yeah. I bet that stands for Andrew Schoenfeld. In case you forgot, the fourth rule of the Okay, well, I'm almost there. I need to get some DNA. I have to think about that. Um, but I've been streaming for an hour and a half now, so it's probably about, what, I'd say 12, half 12. So I'm going to kill it here, but um, we've got a bit further. Um, I need to just double check. 23rd. My calendar say I've got until this Sunday to finish this game off. When can I stream next? Probably Saturday. 
Yeah, I'll try to do this again on Saturday because I'm pretty much near the end of this anyway. In the meantime, I need to play a bit more Mean Street, so I'll do that later. But uh, thanks for um, hanging around, and um, we'll get back to this and finish this soon. So uh, until then, I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, wait a minute. I'm being silly. Because there's one thing I keep forgetting before I kind of do this. Just give me a second. Right. Because I keep forgetting to see who else is on. And I should really do a, a, a raid. So let's uh... No, that's not what I wanted. Hang on a minute. Um... Here we go. Yeah, there's no one else that I can see to read because there's nobody else that's usually on by now. Let's have a look now. Alright, no problem. Right, so we're just going to call it a video. Um, I'll probably see you guys soon. So, uh, 